Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the San Francisco Giants. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. Just about set to go. Today's starting pitcher, Logan Webb. Chris, what are you looking for from him? Well, there are going to be a lot of balls in play because of the ground ball rate. Important that the defense stays engaged in the game. I think it's critical. Tempo is there. If you work quickly, it helps the fielders behind you to stay engaged, to make those plays, and help you get through the innings. Ready to go now. Here's George Springer to start it off. And here it comes. Outside low. And we are underway here in San Francisco. Line drive to short and caught. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Blue Jays. And the key to victory for them here, get their starters some run support early. Boog, if they can get him that run support early, it's likely the other team folds because they know how dominant he can be once he gets settled in. So put pressure on that other team right away. Jump out to a lead early, and a few runs is going to feel like 30. Bo Bichette up to the dish. Down the line. Conforto makes the grab for the second out. The first Two outs, base is empty. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. now. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., that swing so reminiscent of his dad. Lots of pop. The pitch. Now this is in the air down the line. Conforto on the move towards foul ground. Couldn't get to it before it dropped foul. Two outs, space is empty. That one is hammered right field. That's back there. It bangs off the wall. Guerrero into second and he's got a double. Well, they call that an advantage count for a reason. You're so much more likely to get something you can handle. Anytime you smoke a ball off the wall, you kind of think about what it could have been, but obviously you have to be happy with that result. Man in scoring position with two away. Here's Justin Turner. That one finds the zone. And that is strike one. Well, they're looking to get on the board first here after that clutch two-out double made this inning interesting. Man at second. Missed with a changeup. And the count is one and one. There's a swing and a drive. That one hops against the fence. And they strike first as they take a 1-0 lead. And he's got a double. He was all over that one. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. So two down. Kevin Biggio next up for the Blue Jays. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Turner at second with two down. That one missed. It's a good take. Two outs. Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. Headed for the plate. The throw in. 
It's offline. The run comes in, and they lead by two. Love how he let that ball travel, trusted his hands. Nice job of going the other way. Two outs, runner at first. Here's the second baseman. Outside low. And that is ball one. Webb, 27 years old, and he was drafted in the fourth round back in 2014. Next pitch is outside. And the righty deals. Swing and a miss as he was late that time. Good late sink on that fastball. Out of the hand looks so good. And then by the time he gets in the hitting zone, hard to get the barrel to it. There's the strike of the knees. Two runs across in the inning. And we're just getting started here in the top of the first. Up and in. And it's a full count. 3 2, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitters got to stay focused on the pitch. Swings and misses, struck him out. Two runs, three hits, no errors, and one left. Bottom half of inning number one coming up. Blue Jays two, and the Giants nothing. Back here in San Francisco and on the mound today Kevin Gossman when he's on Boog he's really fun to watch he takes the pressure off entire lineups and typically he doesn't need a ton of runs in support no one should be surprised if he settles in and takes full control of this game that's what he's looking to do for sure bottom of the first here's Lamont Wade Jr. and a pitch that's outside ball one well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. And the 1-0. -oh. Wouldn't oh, chase that time. Oh, Just missed. Oh, 3-0 -oh down. And a four-pitch walk. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Man at first, and up next for the Giants, Tyro Estrada. And that one pulled foul. one now this one smashed down the right field line and it goes just foul puts it in the air out towards left center Varsho makes the play and there's one down oh he throws it away Here's the Giants lineup. They're dealing with a top level arm on the mound, so this figures to be a tough matchup for them. What's the key to the offense today, Singy? Well, oh, Boog, I think when you got a guy that's this talented on the mound, you've got to find ways to disrupt his rhythm, make him uncomfortable a little bit. The guys that can handle the bat and perhaps, you know, bunt, bunt for a base hit, get him moving off the mound. If you're in the box and he seems to be just in a flow, step out, mess up his timing, somehow try to get in his head a little bit. And then when he does come in the zone, you may only get one pitch. You better not miss it. Yeah, the right hander deals. And a foul ball. Yeah. 
And another ball. And Singy, as a team, you need to make the most of the very few opportunities he's going to give you, right? Absolutely. And, and you know, if you don't get to guys like this, a lot of times early, once they really settle in, it's going to be the later innings that they hand that ball over to a reliever if they do at all. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to at least for now allow him to get that call so hitters are going to have to make an adjustment but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can Jorge Soler up at the plate and ball one righty delivers that one's in there and a count one and one Out to short, Bichette. They take the force out, bang, bang, play, and the inning is over. One left for San Francisco. They trail things here, 2-0. And we're back, and now it's Dalton Varsho. The right-hander back to work. Swings through that. This guy's sink has so much drop in it. It's almost like a split finger fastball. Instead of just weak contact and balls on the ground, he gets swings and misses. Oh, and two now. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Next offering misses. Now one and two. One ball, two strikes. It down. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Well, oh, that'll make you feel good as a hitter right there. It sounded different than most hits coming off the bat. You don't need numbers to tell you the ball was hit extremely hard, but at 115 miles per hour, that's not an exit velocity you see very often. Very impressive. Now here is Alejandro Kirk. And that's off the inside edge. And that's ball one. Varsho gets his lead at first with nobody out. And that is in for a strike. And the count one and two. A swing and a soft liner. Puts it away for the out. That swing right there tells me he's seeing the ball pretty well. I know it didn't produce a hit, but he made solid contact, and that's all you're looking to do anytime you're at the plate. Here's Kiermaier now. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. That one finds the zone. That's strike one. Yeah, we go beyond just the you know fielding percentage and you know what it looks like, but the ability to have a range and you know close holes that you know are normally there against an average defender. But this guy is special, and you can see it in his first step quickness. And he'll one. And a foul ball. Boog, and the one thing about that is speed never goes in a slump, and defense shouldn't either. Hitting wise, you can struggle, you can lose your mechanics, but the thing that you can do consistently every single game is play great defense if you're talented in that way, and this is what this guy does. The pitch. Left hand hitter waits. That one not close. And now it's three and two. Man at first, one away. Oh 
Right hander kicks deals. Foul. We'll see another payoff pitch. Left hand batter waits. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. Battling here as he fouls it away. Three, two. And down on strikes he goes. He battled for a long time, but it finishes with a strikeout. You can't be mad at yourself after an at-bat like that one. And the batter is George Springer. He's 0 for 1. And the slider just misses. Next offering is in for a strike. Dangerous spot for that slider right there. Didn't seem to quite finish out front and get that sharp break. Tell you what, he doesn't want to throw that pitch again. Lace down the line. This looks like extra bases. Around third. He scores, and they're up by three. Comes through with the RBI. Solid swing from start to end. On time with everything. Really good balance. Nice extension. And he met it out front for the line drive knock. Bobachek gets a chance to hit. Flied to right his first time. And there's a foul ball. hit to right that gets down for a hit run comes in from second and it's four nothing well done drives in the run with the way defenders track down balls these days I mean both from the infield and in the outfield there really aren't a lot of base hits on balls hit like that but there's always a little room back behind the first and second baseman to drop a long dart in there and he found a way runner at first with two away here's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. One for one with a double and a run score. Clips the corner. Strike one. Two runs across in the inning. Here at the top of the second. On the ground. And foul ball. Got him. And there is another strikeout. They get two runs on three hits, no errors, and one left. We go to the bottom of inning number two. It's the Blue Jays four and the Giants nothing. Back here at Oracle Park, bottom of the inning. Michael Conforto will climb in. Gosman back to work. Oh, and that's outside. One and oh. And a good eye there. Carl Dixon doing the umpiring behind the plate. And Boog, I'm not sure if it's because he sort of sets up higher than most, but one thing to be aware of with Dixon is the high strike. Not usually a big deal because most players are swinging at pitches up there, but we may see some surprise looks from hitters from time to time because that's just so unusual. That one finds the zone, and it's three and one. He swings and fouls one off. Oh. 
payoff pitch. And that's ball four. It's tough after falling behind a hitter, two balls and no strikes, but now at least he gets a fresh start against a new batter, but he needs to get back into the strike zone and start pitching with conviction. Matt Chapman at the plate and takes high there. The 1-0. That clips the corner. Cold night tonight, Boog, and that's a pretty firm fastball right there. I tell you what, memories of getting jammed, they are creeping into my mind right now. Next pitch in for a strike, and the count is one and two. Good approach right there. You want to get something just a little higher that you can elevate. Stay out of that double play. In the dirt. Safe at second. And now a man into scoring position. Definitely trying to work down and get that double play ball, but it got away enough to erase any chance of that. Good job of moving up in the scoring position. Now a hit could make that wild pitch really sting. Man at second. Struck him out swinging. Slider got him for a strike three. Wow, just great bite to that slider. Broke hard out of the zone, and he just couldn't hold up the swing. You know, as a hitter, that pitch is really hard to take, and there's just not much you can do with it. You know that, but you don't want to get rung up by the umpire. Austin Slater in now. Takes ball one off the plate. Conforto over at second, one down. Swings and misses, and it's one and one. There's a swing and a miss. Clearly, he was sitting on a fastball right there. It just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just going to have to battle two strikes. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Patrick Bailey, the next giant to hit. Fastball for a strike. The Giants down by four, bottom half of inning number two. And that one upstairs. Bottom of the zone and a called strike. Man on second, two down. Fights that one away, still one and two. Hit hard, base hit. Coming home. Here's the throw to the plate. Safe. Picks himself up an RBI. Other than ripping one into the gap or blasting one over the wall, there aren't a whole lot of hits that are more satisfying than a nice line drive in the center field. So that definitely felt good. Now Marco Luciano. That one catches the corner for a strike. The shortstop takes a ball. Going to count one and two. And another ball. Two two now. And they'll do it again. Two two. Got him looking and he did not like the call. But the RBI single pushes across a run. It's now a 4 1 ball game. You're dialed into the show.
And welcome back to the ballpark. Now it's the DH, Justin Turner. The why to kick the pitch. That's in there, and that's strike one. It's been a rough start on the mound for this guy. This third inning is so important for him to get on track, turn the page, settle in, do all those things you need to do to give your team a little bit of length in this one. And a foul ball. Pitch misses, and a count one and two. Not in time, an infield knock to start the inning. Man at first, Kevin Biggio up to the plate. They'll say, this is a guy that grew up in big league clubhouses, and it's something that you see throughout the game. Sons, whose father has also played the majors. That's in there, and it's 0 and 1. I can only imagine the comfort level of being in the ballpark. For those kids who are fortunate enough to have a dad that played in the big leagues, then being on the baseball field, for some it's pressure. For them, they feel that they are right at home. The pitch. Gets a piece, and it stays 0 and 2. The pitch. And that's a little bit high. Really good take, especially with two strikes. And the pitch. Fouls it off, still one and two. The pitch. That's outside. Two and two. In the air, left field. Slater calls it in, and there's one away. Now it's the second baseman. He's over one. Foul ball there. And that's in there at the knees for a strike. Next offering is down low. This one in the air center field. Yastrzemski makes a nice running catch. So a man aboard. So up next for Toronto, Dalton Varsho. And that one fouled off. Turner, the runner at first with two gone. Swing and a ground ball out to short. They get the force out number three. Blue Jays held in check as they hold on to a 4-1 lead. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And digging in for San Francisco, Lamont Wade Jr. And the pitch. Right through there for a strike. Yeah. 
Pitch misses, and it's one and two. That's a really good take right there. Slider down and in. Very difficult to get on the same plane and do anything with. Foul ball still a one and two count. Popped up left side. Bichette on the move. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. One down. Now that the second baseman. Tyro. Tyro Estrada to the plate. Fly to left his first time. And it's fouled away. One out, base is empty. Next offering is downstairs. And a swing and a miss there. That's towards center. Kiermaier moving under it. He's got it, and there's two away. The center fielder, number five. Two outs, base is empty. And up next for San Francisco, Mike Yastrzemski. Just missed. And another ball. The Blue Jays leading by three here in the last half of the third. Wouldn't chase that time. And a pitch. Foul ball. Two down, nobody on. That one fouled off. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Two outs, and he walked him. One of the things about that two-out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or an end of the gap will produce a two-out RBI, and those are the best. That is if you are the offensive side of it. Solaire swings through that one as he comes to the plate for the second time today. Kicks and deals. Go Chris through the early stages. He hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes. That ends the inning. So the Giants leave one. And this is still a 4-1 ball game. Out of the fourth. And now the catcher comes up to him. Alejandro Kirk. Webb back to work. And there's a foul ball. Kirk. A former All-Star, 25 years old, and he's a native of Mexico. Bounce to the left side, Chapman. And one gone yeah. in the fourth as they get the leadoff man. Well, he didn't recognize changeup earlier enough, got out in front a little bit, rolled over on it, and beat it into the ground. Kevin. Here's Kevin Kiermeyer. His first at bat was a strikeout. Singy, you got to appreciate a guy who's this good defensively. I mean, watching him track balls in the outfield, it is beautiful. And first offering is fouled off. So how much does his speed factor into his ability to go get it? It's heartbreaking for the hitter because off the bat, he thinks 
this ball is going to get down because of that speed and the ability to make up so much ground he enters the picture and breaks a guy's heart one down base is empty swings through that one it's a strikeout back to the top of the lineup here's George Springer one for two there's one guy that I can think about Boog who started as a third baseman Alex Gordon and then became an elite perennial slice to right and it jumps the wall in foul territory for an automatic double the automatic double kind of feels like enjoying cruise control in your car boo you don't need to keep the pedal down as you cruise into second base just no worries in the world you know what he put a really good swing on that one bulbous shit the next to hit the shortstop takes a ball yeah some guys just have instincts right I mean that's the way it goes we talk about Larry Walker the Hall of Famer and his instinct on the bases despite the fact that he didn't play a, a ton of baseball as a kid close but call the ball and it's 2 and 0 oh. remember Mark Kotze was a real good defensive outfielder good instincts not great speed Man at second. Whoa, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. waiting for a turn at the plate. And he walked him on four pitches. That just came apart right there. Four pitch walk and guy at the play was not going to help him out by swinging at something out of his own. So two on with two away. And next for Toronto, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And that one's a little bit low. And that's ball one. Yeah, and I figured you would get Kotze into this because you had a free dinner at his house the other night. That is true. Two on, two outs. Oh, that's out. Here comes a pitch. That one's spoiled, and the count now two and one. Springer, the lead runner at second. Bichette on at first with two down. Ripped on the ground at second. They take the force out. That ends the frame. Blue Jays leave a pair, but they lead it four to one. here in San Francisco now it's the right fielder Michael Conforto the pitch misses just off the outside edge I think that was a strike all these Giants do the great job Boog of just waiting for the right pitch to come their way and I'm seeing oh now this one's high and deep way back there on its way gone He hammers one out to right, and they cut into the lead. It's 4-2. That swing just injected more drama into this one. Oh, that one got in the jet stream on a line drive. We saw the numbers on the backs of the jerseys of the outfielders, which is usually bad news. And all of a sudden, they're back in this ball game. Now it's Matt Chapman. He was a strikeout victim his first time. Just missed. The 1 0. Now fly ball to right center. Kiermeyer moving under it. Hauls it in for the out. It's a good recovery, though, after giving up the home run. Not allowing it to stay in the head, but going to work at the next hitter. And a tough one at that. Austin Slater stands in. He struck out swinging at his first at bat.
And he takes a strike. The Giants trailing by two. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. That misses the zone. And one and one. And that's in for a strike. Man, this guy's got a great feel for his breaking ball today. Righty to the plate. The only adjustment he needs to make is his target. If you aim at the outside corner, that slider's going to end up way off the plate. Perhaps look a little more down the middle, and you get it right where you want it. Swing and a ball lifted left field. And there's two down. Just pulled off of it a little bit right there. That front shoulder coming open instead of staying closed. If he does that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. Bailey, the next to hit, takes ball one. Fought off foul. Lays out, but he can't squeeze it. Still able to get it there in time. And they do get the third out of the inning. The Giants get one back with the solo shot. It's now 4-2. Back after this on the show. And we're back. All set for the start of the inning. And now the DH, Justin Turner. The wind of the pitch. Just missed. Turner, a guy with great bat to ball skill. Smoked on the ground a second. Sends it to first. And a quick out, number one. Kevin Biggio, next up for the Blue Jays. And first offering is fouled off. One down, base is empty. That's a bullet, but it goes foul. Misses off the inside. Yeah, the count one and two. And a swing and a miss down on strikes. Now two out. Definitely made him chase a little bit out of the zone right there. I don't think that's a strike if he takes it. Pretty textbook pitching. Get ahead in the count. Get the guy in the box on his heels and then force him to chase your pitch where he doesn't have much of a chance to do any damage. Number 36 in the box with two gone and takes a look at a called strike. This is important. If he can go one, two, three here, will be a very positive sign for him and for his team. In there for a strike at the bottom of the zone. Bounce to third. And it's a one, two, three inning. Nothing doing for the Blue Jays. But they still lead this one four to two. Back here at Oracle Park, John Chavi with my buddy Chris Singleton. It's set to get us started. Bottom five, Marco Luciano. The right hater back to work. Check swing. He went too far, and it's a strike. And all these Giants just aren't putting great swings on the baseball in this one. Just one extra base hit for them, so they haven't exactly been hitting the ball gap to gap or out of the park. That makes it really difficult to generate runs.
on its way to the corner. And that is a foul ball. One and two now. Ground ball left side. Biggio sends it to first. One up, one down. So the lineup flips over. So here's Wade now. That's in there. Going one. Good eye in that spot. Swing it a foul straight back. Bases empty one away. Last half of inning number five. Goes down swinging for the strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. No messing around with the pitch calling in that sequence right there. Four pitches, all fastballs. Yeah, and that makes me think that was the plan before the at-bat even started. If you think you can simply just beat a guy with only your fastball, why throw him anything else until he shows you he can handle it? Tyro Estrada will hit next. Off the mark there, and it's 1-0. And he deals. Right side. And that chance handled in plenty of time to first. Giants go in order. Giants go down quietly. Still down by a count of four to two. They bring a young arm out of the bullpen in this spot. Mason Black. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their players a chance to fight back into the game. Here's the left fielder, Dalton Varsho. The left fielder, number 25, Dalton Varsho. The wind and the pitch. And a breaking ball drops in for a strike. Swings through that one. Kicks and fires. And yeah, that's a little bit high. And that is ball one. Fly ball pretty well struck right field. Back there. Hits the fence. Safe at second with a leadoff double. A lot of times in today's game, right fielders are able to get to a ball that stays in like that, but he hit that one pretty well. And if he hits it just a little bit different on the barrel, it's out of here easily. But there's nothing wrong with the extra bases right there. Alejandro Kirk next up for the Blue Jays. There's a strike. And the righty deals. Action in the pen down there. Luke Jackson getting ready to come in for Bob Melvin. Number 74 also getting ready. At the belt and fires. Got him. Not what you're looking for after the leadoff double. A strikeout. And there's one away. Oh, that was a pretty poor at bat. He just never got the bat off of his shoulder. I mean, you got to go up there looking to swing at some point, especially once you're down 0-2. And at that point, make an adjustment, look to put the ball in play if it's anywhere close. And I'm just not sure what the plan was there. Kevin Kiermeyer next up for the Blue Jays. Who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. And that one is inside. The 
the pitch. That's inside. In the air, right field, coming on. No trouble here, puts it away for the out. Two down. Maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit. Couldn't quite barrel it up enough to really drive it. So the batting order turns over, and it'll be George Springer to step to the plate. Fouled off left side. Man on second, two down. Late on that fastball. It might be time to choke up a little bit, get that front foot down early, maybe even just spread out. He's really late right now. Varsho on its second with two down. Next offering upstairs. Try to get him to chase on the change up that time. Two outs. Springer swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Third out, and that ends the frame. So no runs here on a base hit. No errors and one left. Part of the order, 3-4-5 coming up. It's the Blue Jays four and the Giants two. Bottom of the six. Stepping in, Mike Yastrzemski. Mike Yastrzemski... Originally drafted by the Orioles, 14th round out of Vanderbilt in 2013. The Giants got him in March of 2019. And San Francisco's really where he got a shot to play. Swung on, belted. Gone. He doinks it off the foul pole. He sends it out of here. It's 4-3. He just sparked this home crowd in a big way. What a swing. Off the bat, it looked like it had plenty of distance, but there was just no telling if it was going to stay fair. I mean, he really hooked that thing down the right field line, but good thing that big pole was there to let us know. Could have very easily just been a long strike if he hit it out front any more than he did. And now here is Jorge Soler. And that one's gone into the bleachers. He'll take a jog around the bases. And they tie it up. It's 4-4. Listen to these fans. This place is absolutely buzzing right now. You can feel the energy all the way up here in our broadcast booth. Back-to-back -back homers, always a special feeling at the ballpark, especially if it's your team that does it, and those guys get to slap hands at home plate. This is the kind of thing that can really fire up a ball club. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Kevin Gosman makes way, and as he heads off, we'll step aside for a minute. Back with the new pitcher after this break. Mitch White taking over on the mound. Number 45. So it's all tied up thanks to the home run. Michael Conforto now at the plate. He's already homered here in this one. 
That one's nope. upstairs. Ball one. Ball one. Tied at four. Liner to second and picked on the hop. Tosses to first. One away, bottom of the sixth. Here's Matt Chapman. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. And misses inside. And I think that skill set really upgrades the position because when you have that kind of speed, it makes the whole team that much better. And another ball. What about him playing another position on defense, one that would require a little more range? Absolutely. And I think if push came to shove where they had to make a, a move during a game, it surprised a lot of people. You might even be able to put him in center field. Righty delivers. Ground ball up the middle, and that one finds its way through. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. Up next to the no now the left fielder, Austin Slater. Slater. That one a little bit high. Ball one. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. With the go-ahead run at first, here in the bottom of the sixth. Next offering popped in the air, right field. And George makes the grab. A little drop and drive on that swing. Backside collapsing just a little bit, trying to put the ball in the air. Patrick Bailey digs in now. This guy, one of the best defensive catchers going. You talk about framing, the ability to block, catch, and throw. He is at the top of the game. White checks over to first, and he's back. Really good athlete, and many times we talk about, you know, the feet of infielders. This catcher as well, really quick feet. He's able to recognize the pitch, see the trajectory, and get into a spot where he can block those balls and keep them from going to the backstop. On the ground to third. They get the force, and that is the inning. But two round trippers in this inning. The long ball was working. All even now at four apiece. It's Major League Baseball on the show. And welcome back to the ballpark. We go to the top of the seventh, and now the shortstop, Bo Bichette. Black back to work. Right through there for a strike. Really impressive with the way he frames, the way that he sets it up, because sometimes those pitches are off the plate, but because he sets up and presents it so well, he still strikes for his pitcher. And a foul ball, he stays alive. And Chris, beyond the fact that he's so incredible defensively, he also can swing the stick. Comes up empty as he chases that one in the dirt. Got him. One away on the strikeout. You know, Boog, you often think of sliders more for that horizontal movement, but most of the good ones have both vertical depth and that horizontal movement, and that's what we saw right there. Good drop on the break and got him to swing over the top. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., the next to hit. One for three. Fastball for a strike. One down, base is empty. Base hit, center field.
Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Pretty good spot, hard and inside, but that's a perfect example of keeping your hands inside the ball tight to the body. The ability to take that back up the middle shows his approach is to use the entire field. Go ahead, run on base. Turner climbs in on that right side. That misses the zone. 1 and 0. Oh. Tied at four. Last two pitches have been down in the zone. Pitcher clearly trying to get that ground ball double play. But in this count, you're going to have to give in, elevate his pitches, and get back into this at bat. That one misses. Three and O. Oh. Kevin Biggio waiting to hit for Toronto. One away. Tie game. Go ahead, run. Stands at first. Hammered down the right field line, base hit. Guerrero around second, headed for third. Throw comes in quickly, holds that go-ahead run at third, and there's still one away. Well, when you fall behind in the count, you've got to come into the zone, and then guys have a better chance of hitting the ball hard like he did right there. Runners at the corners here, one away. Kevin Biggio with a chance to hit. First pitch doesn't find the zone. At the dish, looking to lift the ball in the air in this spot. Anything but the inning, inning double play, boo. And the 1-0. Tough spot right here. A couple runners on. Two ball count. You can't nibble, but you have to execute and finish your pitch. If you leave something out over the plate, it's going to bring in some runs. And a good eye there. This is a situation where the hitter is looking for something up in the zone that he can get his arms extended. What you have to be careful of is that pitch that's up, that's in on your hands. That'll pop you up in the infield, and that's exactly what the pitcher wants. Next offering in there for a strike. They're now three and one. Two on, one out. And fouled off. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. Unafraid to throw it right there. That's trust in your stuff. Just one out away from getting out of a huge jam. Here's the second baseman. And go ahead, run at third. Here in the top half of inning number seven. That one finds the zone. And the count even at one. Two on, two outs. That one misses two and one. Close pitch there, and he's kind of wondering where it missed. You know, getting a feel for each umpire's strike zone is something that pitchers and hitters really have to think about and work on from game to game and sometimes from at bat to at bat. Hammer could be extra bases. One runs in. Around third. Across is the runner from first, and it's 6-4. Well, a big swing of the bat right there. When you connect and it jumps off your bat like that, you're thinking double at the very least. Put a great swing on it, and man, he wasn't fooled at all. Here's a new pitcher from the pen, Eric Miller. And this could be a pretty critical point in this game. They're hoping he's the guy to keep him within striking distance.
So runner at second two down. Here's the left fielder Dalton Varsho. Pitch misses and that's ball one. Left hand batter waits. That's the third. Chapman over to first in time. That ends the inning and stops things from getting out of hand. But they'll pick up a couple runs here, both coming on this two run double. It's a two run lead now at 6 4. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. here in San Francisco set for the last half of the seventh and the batter will be the shortstop Marco Luciano the pitch and that one missing low movement in the Blue Jays bullpen Jimmy Garcia getting loose out there Mesa a left hander also throwing Next pitch is outside. Line drive, and that should be extra bases. Around first, digging for two. Throws to second, and he's there with a leadoff double. Well, that's how you respond. Leadoff man comes up, gets into scoring position. Now, there are several ways that they can get this run across. Hennis is Cabrera taking them out. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect a tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. Back to the leadoff spot in the Giants lineup. Lamont Wade Jr. will hit next. Ball one there. Tying run at the plate. Next pitch in for a strike and a count one and one. Out to short and that's a base hit. Oh the throw is over his head. Well that's a smart decision to hold up with one out and the heart of the order coming up. Don't want to run into an out at home plate. So runners at the corners, nobody out. Now the number two hitter, Tyro Estrada. 0 for 3 with two fly outs and a ground out. This is what stat nerds like myself might call a high leverage situation. Yeah, Boog, not sure what the numbers say, but clearly an at bat that could change the course of this game dramatically. Roll to short, could be two. Bichette, off balance speed, there's one. And a run scores on the double play. First and third, nobody out. You're thinking you've got it lined up for a pretty big inning right here. So that double play is pretty deflating. They get the run in, but now they're starting all over. Mike Yastrzemski up here. He's already homered in this game. There's a strike. Cabrera, 27 years old, and they went out and made a trade for him last season. Looking to get the tying run on base. That misses. And a count two and one. Holding on to a one run lead here at the bottom of the seventh. 
Next pitch is downstairs. Jorge Soler waiting on deck if they extend the inning. Plenty of pop in his bat, so he could give them the lead with one swing if he gets the chance. Foul. We'll see another payoff pitch. Left hand hitter waits. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. And now the lefty. And down on strikes. He didn't make it easy for him on the mound, but they still get the strikeout. But they push across one run on two base hits. No errors, and nobody left on. Eighth inning coming up. It's the Blue Jays six and the Giants five. We go to the eighth. Here's the catcher, Alejandro Kirk. The pitch. And a foul ball. And it's even up. High in the air, out to right. Conforto sizes this one up. And there's one away. And now for the Jays, Kevin Kiermeyer, 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a flyout. That's in for a strike. And that one sliced foul. In the dirt, now one and two. Base is empty, one away, and we're in the top of the eighth. Line drive, and that should be extra bases. Around first, heading for two. And that's a double. Everything came together for him. Nice line drive to the pull side right there, but he didn't spin off of it. That's the key. You still have to extend through the baseball in order to hit a line drive like that. Back to the leadoff spot in the Blue Jays lineup. And now the right fielder, George Springer. Late on that fastball. Man at second. And that one fouled off. And here it comes. That one is absolutely belted. And it hits the fence. The throw into second. He pulls into second. A run comes in on the play. So close to blasting that one out of here the other way, but. Well, that's very tough to do when you take on the outfield gap like that. Beautiful swing, though. Let the ball get a little deep and drove it to the opposite field. Man, it's second with one away. So up next for Toronto, Bo Bichette. He's got the power, but great contact skills. One of the best contact hitters in the game. And that one hit to first. And he takes it himself for the out. And next for Toronto, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. That clips the zone. It's 0 1. Late in the game, everyone gets a little tighter. Way to get ahead on a really good hitter right there. Two outs with a runner at third. Hard on the ground to first. 
He takes it himself to the bag, and that'll do it. But a run will score in the inning on this RBI double. It's now 7-5. It's Major League Baseball, and it's on the show. Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Jimmy Garcia. These are the spots relievers really make a name for themselves, late and close. There's not much margin for error, but at the same time, there's a reason they're put in these situations. And a pinch. Soler in the box here lets that one go for a ball. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Jordan Romano appears to be getting loose. The pitch. And there's a strike on the outside corner. And another ball. The two on. Swing and a foul straight back. The two two. Good job to fight that one off. Two two now. Knocks that one away and we'll do it again. Just misses the mark outside the zone. Fouled off again and it remains three and two. Right hander kicks deals fouls it back with two strikes. Outside and that is ball four. That's a great at bat. He saw a lot of pitches and earned a walk. When you go that deep into it at bat, the hitter usually comes out on top. The batter will be Michael Conforto. Corner infielders guarding the lines, trying to prevent extra bases. And that is in for a strike. 1 1. Now, these guys definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. The tying run at the plate. Out towards right center field. Springer going back. And it hits the fence. Runner around third. He'll score easily. And it's a one run game. Well, back within one as he brings home the run. Just missed out on a home run right there, but he certainly hit it hard enough. Just didn't have the right launch angle to carry it over the wall, but still an excellent swing of the bat. Looks like we've got a substitution at second. Coming in as a pinch runner, Brett Wisely. And here is Matt Chapman. Outside. With the go ahead run at the plate, here the bottom half of the eighth inning. Headed towards the corner. Springer there makes the catch. Runner tags at second. And it comes in too late. He's up to third on the fly out with one away. Austin Slater now at the plate. 0 for 3 with two flyouts and a strikeout. You have to stay disciplined in these at bats. Try not to chase. A strikeout here is the last thing you want. That's in there. And it's 0 and 1. And I know you want to be patient as a hitter, but. 
you got to be ready to jump on the first thing straight. And he got one right there, but left the bat on his shoulder. And that one fouled off. And a pitch. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Curveball in the dirt. Gets the out. Two down after the strikeout. And an excellent job keeping it right there. Really nice job behind the plate with the pressure on. Tying run at third. So he did a great job of not only completing the strikeout at first, but also making sure that that guy stays put 90 feet away. That doesn't go unnoticed. And up next for the Giants, Patrick Bailey. There's the strike. And the pitch. That misses, and the count is one and one. The tying run is 90 feet away. Very solid inning on the mound so far here in the eighth. Holding on to this narrow lead. This is exactly what they were looking for. Here's a one two. Now he breaks his bat. Throws the first in time. They limit the damage here. Giants get a run on the RBI double. And the home team down a run. Major League Baseball is on the show. So coming into the game now on defense, Brett Wisely. He takes over and right. So Luke Jackson gets the call. And we all know about his slider. It's just filthy, man. And one of the better ones in the game, I'd say. Spin rate's very high, and it just breaks a ton. Well, one-run game. Now it's the DH, Justin Turner. The wide to kick the pitch. Just off the outside edge, and that's ball one. And another ball. Next offering is down low. And there's ball four. Looked like a questionable call in that spot. He even seemed a little surprised it went his way at the plate. But as a hitter, you'll take that all day. Now it's going to be Kevin Biggio. That one misses. That's five straight. Signs of movement in the Giants' bullpen. Number 73 getting ready to come in for Bob Melvin. Number 74 also throwing. The 1 0. And that one ripped to left. Squeezes it. Man, that's one of those at-bats where you have to remind yourself it's about the process. He did everything right right there. Nothing to show for it. But in your mind, you have to convince yourself that it was a very good at-bat. Now it's the second baseman. First offering, and it just misses. And there's a ball. It's getting squeezed a little bit here late. And a swing to miss. 
Well, and those hitters count sometimes can be a little too aggressive, and a good pitcher will play off of that. He's got to get a better pitch to hit. And the right hander deals. Got him. That's out number two. So digging in, Dalton Varsho. That one is upstairs. Next offering is in for a strike. Crowd locked in right now. One run game here in the ninth. This one in the air. Gets under it. Hauls it in to end the inning. No runs on no hits, no errors, and a runner left. And 9-1-2 scheduled to lead off the bottom of the ninth. Blue Jays 7 and the Giants 6. Back now and on the mound, the closer, Jordan Romano. And I can't imagine any save is an easy one. You're holding a small lead on the scoreboard, and you know those hitters are going to give you the best at bats they can. So it's always high stress. Let's see what he's got here to try and close it out. Now it's the shortstop, Marco Luciano. The pitch. That one finds the zone. Going one. No need to offer that pitch until you get to two strikes. It's just a low percentage of success when you want to try to go after that down and away pitch. One run game, bottom nine. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. Way upstairs, ball two. Hacks and misses, it's a strikeout. Well, the first batter, it's always a big one for the closer. I mean, you get that punch out, you get settled in, you feel like you're in command out there on the mound from the jump. And kind of prevents any doubt from creeping into your mind or the fielders that are playing behind you that you know you're going to wrap this thing up. Wade up to bat next lays off for a ball. That's a hit. And that puts the tying run on base. A couple of hits in a row for him here. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the ball straight to it. That's great work right there. Here in the bottom of the ninth, one out. Here's the second baseman, Tyro Estrada. Slider for a strike. Pitch. That one missed. Here comes a pitch. Tapped at the plate, but it's a foul ball. A one run lead. They're the home team trying to pull it out. Fights that one away, still one and two.
And a pitch. Check swing. Now we'll look down to first. No swing. Just held it back there. Kicks and deals. Got him swinging. He had him out in front, which isn't easy to do against a hitter like this, known for using the entire field. Just couldn't sit back long enough on that one. So it's their last chance in this one. Mike Yastrzemski, the next giant to hit. Swings and pulls it foul to the right side. Typically, the outfield defense will play a little bit deeper just to keep the ball in front, make sure that runner on first doesn't come all the way around to score and tie this ball game up. And he deals. They're down to their final strike. Romano is just one strike away. With the winning run at the plate, we're in the last half of the ninth inning. And ball one. Up the middle, sneaks through, base hit. And now the winning run is on base. That's tremendous fight from him, and I know it's got the dugout fired up down there, down to the last strike, and he comes up with a hit to keep the game alive. It ain't over yet. So first and second with two outs. And next is the designated hitter, Jorge Soler, down to their final out, but an opportunity to deliver the tying and maybe even a winning run. In the dirt, runners stay put, that's ball one. Next offering upstairs. Right side, hard hit. Steps on the bag himself, ball game. Well, all you want is a chance going in that final frame. They got some base runners, had the tying run at second, the winning run at first, just couldn't come through with the big hit. On the other side, nice job to battle through it, close out the win. One run game here today, your final score, seven to six. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew, I'm John Chomby saying so long. Final 